I am Bernard Dunn, Editor-in-Chief of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. I recently wrote an editorial on the importance of olfaction in neurodisability. Today I'm having a conversation with Professor Richard Doty, who's been a pioneer in basic research, clinical research and also clinical practice in olfaction. Richard has been the director of the University of Pennsylvania Smell and Taste Center for about 40 years. Richard, thank you very much for doing this. I would like to ask you, what is the relevance of the sense of smell to human functioning? We've got the safety issues, we've got the nutritional issues, we have the quality of life issues, so that certainly the smell system is very, very important. How does smell affect nutrition? It really dictates the flavor of foods. Most things that we think of as tastes are really smells. So the taste buds only signify sweet, sour, bitter, and salty, and something called umami, which is monosodium glutamate-like sensation. But everything else we think of as taste is really smell. So chocolate, strawberry, you know, steak sauce. So when we chew food and swallow foods, the molecules go back up into the nasopharynx, where the olfactory receptors are. And that's what determines the flavor of most food. You can demonstrate this for yourself by simply holding your nose shut and putting chocolate in your mouth, and you won't notice the chocolate as soon as you open up your nose. You have also been interested in other functions of smell. Another important function of the sense of smell is to protect us from environmental hazards. Leaky natural gas is an obvious one. There are other things that are important. Mothers like the smell of babies and children around the nipple of a lactating mother. There are sebaceous glands that an infant learns the odor of their mother very early on. The same way, as I mentioned, the mother learns the odor of the baby. There are sebaceous glands on the baby's head that give each individual sort of a distinct odor. So there's an emotional bonding that occurs early on. Is the sense of smell already active to some extent in utero? The fetus can learn odors that are part of the diet of the mother, and this has been demonstrated in many species, but mothers eat a lot of garlic, the offspring will later prefer garlic more than offspring of mothers that did not eat garlic. In the past, there was the notion that the sense of smell was relatively ineffective in humans, but recent evidence has shown that it is not the case. That's correct. Certainly, we can detect presumably tens of thousands of substances. The way the system works is that typically most environmental smells are made up of multiple chemicals, and we have close to 400 types of receptors. This is much more than for other senses, but does it mean we can interpret all those smells? I think that's true of all sensory systems, or major sensory systems, that it really depends on how you find the stimuli. Do you think we can use olfaction in the context of therapy? Well, certainly relaxation and certain odors become conditioned to relaxing situations. You can think, say, the odor of suntan lotion, for example, brings you back to the beach or brings you back to a relaxed environment. And so certain types of odors could be and have been used in attempts to relax people. From what age could we start with formal evaluation of smell in children and how? Well, believe it or not, most children are familiar with many odors by the age of five or six years of age. So when you use an odor identification test, they actually can do relatively well. We've designed tests for evaluating children. There's a rotating disc inside two pieces of cardboard, in effect, and at the top there's a slit where the scratch and sniff odor appears, and then there's some choices. And so the child scrapes that of the parents or whomever is doing the testing scrapes the odor open, and then the child's given some choices, and those odors have been chosen to be familiar to most children. And then this thing rotates around inside this two pieces of cardboard, sort of like a sleeve. And at some point, the answers show up in the front through little holes. And it works very well. It's like a game. And I've had patients, children that parents have brought in saying the child could not smell. I gave this game to the kids and actually often can smell quite well to the amazement of parents. And then there's also tests that can be done with conditioning in even babies, but those have not been worked out clinically as much as the kind of tests that I just mentioned. Well, thank you very much. This is really fascinating. And although you've been involved in this for many, many years, it seems to be still a field in full emergence. Right. Yeah, it really is. Thank you.